When I got the call to do Fosse Verdon, I think my first, the first emotion I had was paralyzing fear. There's a lot of pressure in a certain way when you're recreating the shows. Every day is, is a new challenge. Every day is a test. Every day is something that I may have done before, or maybe not, and I have to find new ways of doing things. It literally was so overwhelming. I thought, there's no way I can do this, but I'm going to try. So Gwen Verdon was the classic redhead. Everyone knew her as a redhead. So we kind of went from there. And you know, she wears a series of four different looks in the show. We have Gwen Verdon's show looks, and then we have the looks what does Gwen Verdon look like when she's not performing? What does Gwen Verdon look like when she's a mother? What does she look like when she's in the house? So like, it's a whole behind the scenes of Gwen Verdon, which I think is really fascinating. Bob is one of the most famous hairdos in the history of theater. I remember the day that Sam finally shaved his head and we knew this was really gonna happen. I mean, I could probably spend two hours talking about how to make a comb over, but I think Chris Fulton could probably speak about it with more authority and, and Debbie Zoller. <laughs> oh my God, the Bob Fosse comb over. <laughs> so Sam Rockwell, he's one of the most incredible sports I've ever worked with. From day one, he said, you can do anything you want. And I said, okay, we're gonna shave your head and we're gonna do this comb over. And we spent days, weeks, creating the perfect comb over system with multiple wigs and multiple pieces to make it look so believable. And it's really important to me that when they step out onto the screen, you see the whole character, that you don't just see the hairstyle, and certainly that you don't that you can't tell they're wearing a wig. And so a lot of that is like little imperfections, little little things that, that make it look lived in. People don't realize what goes into making this look is about two hours in the hair and makeup chair. Debbie and Dave, you know, hair and makeup team. It's phenomenal, just phenomenal what they've done. The most challenging and rewarding looks I think are, are both Bob and Gwen. All the different looks that we create for them are the most challenging. To make them younger, we use products that are called lifts, and we use them under their wigs. So they're hidden, so you can't see them. When they're a little older, it's just them, and then when they're a lot older, we add prosthetic pieces on. God, magnificent. It is such a profound physical journey to age over three decades. They are willing to obsess as much as I am, and it's so exciting because everybody's heart is in it. In doing my research for the different eras, I really found that in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, how different the colors were. Reds were very clear red. There was, you know, pink and like a peach, like a coral. And those colors have to remain true to that era. Open. Beautiful. The department heads on this show have just been astonishing in um, their commitment to detail and authenticity. We happen to be working with one of my very favorite costume designers. Her name's Melissa Toth, and we know each other, and we obsess on details. We really beat ourselves. We were assiduous about making sure that every single detail, and you can't just, you know, be YouTubing this stuff and looking at it. You really, we watched Sweet Charity over and over and over, and we watched Cabaret so many times, the same sequences of Cabaret to make sure that every little spangle and every little detail was as close to the original as humanly possible. It's daunting, the task that the costume department has. It, it, it's just daunting, and Melissa's got such a keen eye. I'm always so excited to see what I'm gonna wear to have a creative conversation with them because it assists me more than I can even convey. We're trying to make the past not feel distant. We're trying to make it feel alive and vital. There are so many iconic looks in our show that we have to recreate, but we're not recreating and putting it in a museum. It has to live and it has to breathe. Just watching that come to fruition with 
you know, all of the hair makeup, which has been stunning, and wigs, I mean, just amazing work. That's always a delight because as we're going through the fitting process, you know, we don't have all the makeup in the hair and that really helps sells the look and sells the period. So we don't get the full vision of it and the satisfaction of it until we're shooting it. So those moments when we're on set and we're watching it, it's like, hey, we did it.